Hey YouTube, this is Sensation reporting in for a review. Today we're going to be reviewing the MTH2884 DMIR, also known as the Duluth Mississippi and Iron Range Yellowstone number 232. Now I know MTH hasn't released a new version of this mo locomotive in quite some time. Uh, so I'm a bit late on getting a review out for it, but it's, I think it's still a very popular locomotive since I don't see very many videos of this locomotive out there on YouTube. Or I don't see very many locomotives of this, like this one, for sale anywhere. I was lucky enough to get this locomotive. I paid $650 for it, which is probably well above MSRP. But that's because it's a very rare locomotive. MTH only made a lot of the, only made a certain number of these. They were out for a very short time. They had limited production. I think there was only four numbers that MTH released to this locomotive. So, and every single one of them sold out, like, instantly. So, this is a very rare locomotive, kind of like the Triplex. Anyway, let's kind of get into the details of this locomotive. As we can see, you know... It's got white wall tires all the way around it, uh, mainly on the pilot, the dry, and the drivers. Uh, there are no white walls on the trailing truck or the tender. It's got a nice cab design. You know, it's got everything you could possibly ever want in a locomotive. It pulls a lot. It pulls great. It runs great. It sounds great. It's got the Proto Sound Three. It's got bright LEDs on it. Really, the details are actually pretty fine in this, are pretty fine in this locomotive. We'll kind of do a quick little, you know, walk around. We're going to start off with the tender today. Something different today. And I figured, you know, it would be good if we started off with something a little different today. So let's start off with the tender. Okay, so we have, you know, the typical MTH coupler here, the automatic coupler. So they put on a lot of their locomotives. This thing actually holds pretty well, surprisingly, for how small it is. You know, you press a you press a button on a function. It's a function. I think it's eight or seven, and the coupler uncouples. And then when it hooks onto a train, it closes. So that's kind of neat how MTH has done that. Um, I honestly replaced them with number fives normally, but haven't gotten around to this locomotive just yet to replacing it. So obviously. You know, there are some things that I still have to do with this locomotive, but it won't take too long. Just trying to see which what. Oh, yeah, there it is. So here, in the tender, we have a switch for DCC and DCS. And it is switched to... DCS mode which is different, which is interesting. I don't know why we switched to that. But anyway, we have the volume. And then we also have the smoke on and off. Now I have the smoke turned off for specific reasons. This is in DCS mode. I'm not going to switch the switch only because I don't want to screw it up anymore. So... I don't want to run the risk of it screwing up on me. Oh, hang on, it's not quite right. There it goes. Now it is. So anyway, that's what that is. It's got the smoke on one side, the volume on one side, and the DCC DCS control on the other side. Uh, right now, I guess it's in DCS mode, which is fine. You can still run the locomotive on any DCC system, even even when it's in DCS mode. I didn't even know it had a DCS mode, but I guess it's, it's an MTH locomotive, so I probably should end on that. But anyway, so looking at the back of the tender, you know, we have the light, then we have the marker lights, which actually do function as red. Then we have an extra bell, which is here, and the front of the locomotive, we've also got another bell, which is way up on top. So, two different bells, I'm guessing, from the locomotive is backing up. People can actually hear it, hear from the tender, so they don't have to be hearing it from the front of the locomotive, which is kind of nice, to, which, is, which is different. It's different, it's 
it's cool. Um, obviously we have the awesome designed centipede tender, which like on the MTH Big Boy or Challenger or FEF, we have the centipede tender. But we have that cool design for the DMIR. We have the um, the safety first logo right there in the middle. Which is always nice to see. We've got this realistic looking coal load in the top, which is actually really cool. You know, it's it's fake coal, but I mean, you know, it's it's pretty nice. Obviously everything that's MTH. Every wheel is sprung. And then you know, and then we have the standard coupling for the locomotive and tender. Uh, this one is just you know it's the standard no wires attached, n uh, no plug really for it in between. This is the M4 if anyone was wondering. Let's move on. There is a cab light which I'll show uh, later on in the video when I turn the lights down. You can be able to see it. Uh, this locomotive is a nice gray color. I'm pretty sure on my phone it looks like it's probably blue But just no, it is definitely not blue. It is kind of gray It's like the triplex So I mean yeah, so I mean it really this locomotive has really high details um, I Haven't seen the brass version of this locomotive. I, did, I don't have one, but you know Obviously with it being MTH, the back is articulated, the front is articulated, everything in itself is articulated. So so we can go around the 18 inch radius curves or 22 inch radius curve that MTH has designed for this locomotive to be able to do. So with that, you know, I know a lot of people are going to say, oh, uh, it shouldn't have blah blah, you know, it's a toy at that point and it can go around 22 inch radius curves. Well, no, it's not. It's a model. Toys, toys are like this. This is a toy. That's a toy. Okay, that's something for kids to play around with. These are a lot different. You know, if I was a parent, I wouldn't buy my kid a $650 locomotive. You know, so there's that. Anyway, but more going back to this locomotive instead of going off on a rant. Um, you know, so this locomotive also comes equipped, equipped with two traction tired axles. Uh, I believe they're about they're either this axle here or they're the back axle. I don't. I'm not entirely certain. I don't exactly remember which one they are, but. Um, they are this stoke mode does have traction tires so it can so it can pull a lot um so let's go ahead and turn this locomotive on so we can hear up so we can hear the startup and the features of this locomotive i'm just going to show you guys the main not the main sounds that you're going to want to hear which would be bell whistle the primary the primary ones you use obviously this is an mth model so it has the crew talk on it. If I leave it just if I let it sit by itself on the track for a little bit, it will have crew talk. So let me go ahead and start it up, which would be function three. All right, now that we've got the locomotive started up, I'm going to dim the lights so you guys can see the cab light. And also there, there, there are the marker lights in the back.
Okay. So, now then, here's the bell. Function one. There's some of the crew talk. Here's the whistle. Obviously when you hold the whistle down long enough, it'll play a different sound at the end. But it's kind of nice. And I'm sorry that my speakers are kind of crackly. Um, I don't know why that is. I got the locomotive brand new. I'm thinking it's because maybe the maybe the speakers can't take the sound. But either way, this is a good running locomotive. It actually runs really well and pulls a lot. So let me get the uh, proper train for it, and uh, we'll do a run by. All right, so now I got the train hooked up to it. Let's go ahead and pull out. Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Until next time, this is Sensation signing off. See you guys later.